I certainly hope that you'll consider helping us. Dima's vision is worth fighting for. So, you're a synth? I am. I hope that's not a problem for you. Dima has worked hard to create a place for us where we can be safe from those who don't accept us. He's put so much of himself into this. All his time and energy devoted to helping others. He never stops to think of himself. Sometimes I worry about... Well, if I wasn't here to make sure his equipment is all functional. And that's not even mentioning maintaining the fog condensers. So many things to keep track of. You do all this work yourself? Mostly, yes. I get help from the others when I can. But no one else really understands Dima the way I do. Can you tell me about the fog condensers? Oh, those? Dima and I designed them when it became clear the fog was only getting worse. They're effective, but have such a limited range. Dima insisted we provide them to the people of Far Harbor, and I'm so glad we did. Without the condensers, I'm not sure they'd have anywhere left. Dima looks like he's had a lot of work done. Well, that's certainly an understatement. Between the two of us, we've made so many modifications. He was just a prototype, never built for all this. It took a lot to overcome the limitations of the original design and expand his memory. It really is remarkable, isn't it? He's overcome so much. He's become so much more than he once was. And all he thinks of is others. If there's anything I can do to help out, just let me know. Well, if you're determined to help, there is something you could do. It's likely somewhat dangerous, though, so I understand if you'd rather not. There's a boat along the coast of the island. It was transporting some hardware we needed. Storage drives. The boat never finished the trip, you see. So the drives are still out there. I could really use them here, for extra parts, if nothing else. My understanding is that the boat wrecked southwest of here. So, does this sound like something you could handle? What happened to the boat? Why didn't it make it? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Trappers, fog crawlers, there's no end to what's out there. And what might still be out there. The point is that we already lost someone once, and I don't want to see that happen again. So, are you up for it? Sure thing, Faraday. I'll get the drives for you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. You track Kasumi here. I'm impressed. Perhaps not as quietly or efficiently as possible, but thankfully she was never in any real danger. I'm afraid your journey was unnecessary. I wanted to see for myself that she's safe. You have my word. Acadia is a safe haven for synths. Were it not, I would not have aided anyone in reaching it. Every synth I've tracked down, every synth convinced to come here, has been assured that he or she will come to no harm. My job is to make sure they all remain safe, no matter what. Understand? How do you manage to track down synths and bring them here? I have a network of contacts throughout the area. Some from my time with the Institute, some after. I know the Institute's tactics, and use that to my advantage. You have Dima's blessing, so by all means, make yourself comfortable. So, what's your story? I used to be a courser, returning synths that had escaped from the Institute. I was tracking a synth and instead found Dima. He convinced me of the truth, and the error of my ways. I rejected the Institute, made sure they couldn't track me, and dedicated my life to instead helping synths find freedom. Tell me about Acadia. Dima's told you most of what you need to know. It's as safe as we can make it for now. With every new synth we rescue, we're better able to defend ourselves. I'd like to help you all. Is there anything I can do? Actually, as a matter of fact, there is. If you're serious about contributing, well, we've got a situation I need someone to look into. You've had some experience traveling around the island, so you may be decently equipped to handle it. What's the problem? We were expecting a new synth to arrive, and he should have been here by now. There's been no sign of him, and I'm concerned that he might have become lost on the way here. You have any leads on where he might be? You should start by talking to Brooks in Far Harbor. He's one of us, a synth. He's the one who meets the new arrivals and gets them started on the journey here. Of course, he's not likely to tell you anything without proof that you're working for me. If he doesn't cooperate, Tell him that his designation is L-792. That should convince him. That's as much help as I can give you for now. Please, 
Hurry. If that synth is out there alone, he won't last long. So, I understand you've seen a good bit of our island. What do you think? You're the one who lives here. What do you think of it? Well, I... I think it's all rather compelling. This island, with all of its danger and beauty, predates you and I. The ecosystem isn't what it once was, but it has adapted, and it will continue to adapt, long after we're gone. What's important, really important in the long run, is understanding it, and then passing that knowledge along to those who will follow us. So, what exactly are you doing? As much as I can, given limited resources. Cataloging specimens, observing evolutionary trends, compiling data for future generations. I should note that I'm not fully versed in human anatomy, but I'm your best chance of medical assistance should you require it. Since Dima has approved of you, I'm more than willing to offer help. What can you tell me about Acadia? It was originally a place of science. I like that about it. Feels like home in a way. I don't mean the Institute when I say home. More that, uh, I don't know, that abstract feeling of belonging someplace. We all belong here, in our own way. Dima's to be thanked for that. Sounds like you got the all clear. So what's your story? I came here looking for Kasumi. Oh, isn't that sweet of you? That Kasumi's a good enough kid, I suppose. A little confused, maybe. But then, aren't we all? Not that anyone's asking, but I'll tell you. It all gets easier to deal with when you realize none of it matters. What you are, where you came from, let go of all that, and life gets simple. Is there anything you care about? I mean, staying alive is preferable to not. Beyond that, what's the point of caring? Anyway, lately I've taken to amusing myself with trading. Don't have much to work with, but I'm always happy to make a good deal. Let me know if you need something. I probably won't have it, but let me know anyway. Anything interesting you can tell me about Acadia? God, no. Have you looked around this place? Death by boredom is a legitimate concern. So? Come on. You want to do a little trading? I assume you're not planning on staying long. Is there a problem with my being here? Maybe. Maybe not. Acadia is only as secure as we make it. We take unnecessary risks, we get careless, and things can go bad. Fast. If there's a synth who needs a safe place, then we take them in. Let them live as a synth, without fear. You don't fit that description. That makes you an unnecessary risk. It's nothing personal. Minimizing our contact with outsiders is just practical. You can relax. I'm not a threat. Just don't cause any trouble. Look, I'm not anybody worth talking to. My head is killing me. Now's not a good time. What's wrong? We're doing this anyway? Even after saying I don't want to talk? C God. You try having somebody botch a mind wipe on you and see how it feels. Then get back to me, okay? What do you mean, mind wipe? Oh, for fuck's sake. You're a synth on the run. You go to someone, you get a new face, and they wipe your mind so the Institute can't find you. Only somebody screwed mine up. <laughs> so here I am. Now just... Please, leave me alone. You're new here too, huh? I mean, I haven't been here that long myself. Honestly, I'd be dead right now if it weren't for Chase. Turns out it's pretty hard to live as a synth in the Commonwealth. Do you think you're better off now that you're here? Oh, absolutely. I don't have to pretend, I don't have to lie, and I don't worry that someone's gonna kill me in my sleep. Or worse. I'll see you around, okay? So you're that new fellow from the Commonwealth. It's so wonderful to meet someone from back home. I'm afraid Kasumi doesn't seem to want to discuss it, but how are things there? You think of the Commonwealth as back home? Aren't you a synth? Well, certainly. Why wouldn't I? It's where I came from. I would like to see it again someday, once things settle down here. Acadia is all well and good, I suppose. But honestly, it does get a bit boring. You're safe here. That's what really matters. Hmm, I suppose. One could do with a little excitement now and then, though. Don't you think? I'm sure I'll see you around. Do take care. What's that you're working on? Just trying to cobble some pre-war junk into something usable. Now, do you mind telling me what you're doing here? 
I'm a detective. I was hired to find you. You... you're a what? You came all this way... for me? You left without telling your folks why. You must have known they'd be worried. Look, my mom and dad... Uh, I mean, those people that were taking care of me, they wouldn't want me back. Not if they knew the truth. What do you mean? I'm not their daughter. I'm a synth. I thought if I just left, it would be easier for them. How would that conversation have gone anyway? I've been lying to you this whole time. Your real daughter is dead and I replaced her? <sighs> do you have any proof that you're actually a synth? Little things. Dreams of waking up in a lab. Years I can't remember from when I was a kid. <laughs> Not to mention how I never quite fit in back at home. You haven't replaced anyone. Kenji and Ray are still your parents. I... I really wish that was true. If I wasn't a synth, things would be so much simpler. <sighs> Acadia isn't what I thought it was. There's more going on here than just the refuge. But I can't leave until I've gotten to the bottom of it. I've been running long enough. What kind of problem is there in Acadia? It's a long story. I just have to figure out how to... Wait. Wait, you find things. Track down answers. That's what you do, right? That's why you came after me. What if I told you that there's a secret? A big secret here, on this island. Something way more important than just one lost girl. What are you talking about? Where to begin? You saw all those computers that Dima's hooked up to, right? They hold his memories, or offload data from his brain. Or maybe some combination of both? Well... Faraday asked me to help do some repairs on them, and, you know, I got curious. There's like a century's worth of life experiences in there. And that's when I see it. Data models Dima has been making. One was the fog taking over Far Harbor. Another was a nuclear detonation on the island. Plus, death counts. What if Dima is so open and welcoming because he's actually hiding something from us? A plan to wipe out the rest of the island. We should get to the bottom of this. If Dima is putting on an act, we need to know. You don't trust Dima? After you came all this way for him? I didn't come to Acadia for him. I came here because this place offered answers. And now that I've found a place I belong, I'd rather not lose it all if Dima is secretly planning to destroy everything. I'll help if I can. But that's not much to go on. I know. I've been working on that, but I haven't had much luck. I keep seeing Dima, Faraday, and Chase head into the laboratory at the other end of the hall. Then they come out later looking like they've been arguing. There's actually a storage space right next to there. It'd be a perfect spot to hide an eavesdrop, but it's been locked up. I've also tried breaking into Faraday's terminal, since he and Dima are so close, but the security on it is crazy. Step aside and let the master hacker show you how it's done. If you're sure. Good luck. Once you have something, let me know. From one case to a new one. It's never easy for us, is it? We need to accomplish this without bloodshed. Far Harbor and the Children of Adam have a right to exist on this island. The same as us. They're going to kill each other, Dima. There's no stopping it. We need to pick a side now. Haven't we already picked a side? Building the fog condensers around Far Harbor wasn't exactly a neutral act. We couldn't stand by and let the people of this island die to the fog. Just like you couldn't just leave the Cult of Adam without a home? Giving them the submarine base was a mistake. The Nucleus, as they're calling it, is basically one big fortified position. Far Harbor had cast them out. They have strange beliefs. But they have always accepted us for what we are. And Confessor Martin was a friend. Well, the new Confessor isn't. High Confessor Tectus is an unstable megalomaniac, and he's going to keep threatening us as long as we're helping Far Harbor. Guys, can we talk about the elephant in the room? We keep dancing around it. My old memory banks in the submarine base. I can't believe you never told me about those. I have to wait until they become a security risk. I know how it looks in hindsight. But at the time, it was an act of trust. 
I was honestly more worried they'd accidentally trip the pre-war security and get hurt, giving the children my old home, allowing them to safeguard my old memories. I thought our people would be working together. Just how secure are the banks? How long do we have? And what's in them? I've gone over this before, Chase. I don't know what's in them. That's how it works. It's as close to forgetting something as I have. But I've run some projections of worst-case scenarios. If we do nothing and the wrong knowledge falls in the wrong hands... So send me over there. I'll be in and out in a day. We can't risk it. They know you're from Acadia. If you're caught, or even seen, then it's war. We should at least prepare her to go in. We're running out of options. I say we tell her how to crack into the memory banks. You've been working on this without me? It came up in a private moment, Chase. But yes, we've been writing a program that will let you access and download my memories. It's not going to be like a normal hack. You'll be breaking through a version of my own mental network. It'll consider you to be an intruder. I've loaded the program with some instructions I've recorded that will help guide you through it. I'm afraid it's difficult to explain without seeing it for yourself. I'm finishing up some tweaks to the program right now. I'll leave a copy of it for you on my desk when I'm done. Get the program, use it to break into the memory banks. Got it. Hopefully you won't have to. We'll keep monitoring the situation. I only want you going in if we have no other choice. I know you left some of your memories behind in an old submarine base. That you're worried the children of Adam will get to them. You've been busy. I was hoping you were taking your time learning more about us. Huh. I suppose you have. Maybe this is an opportunity for both of us. I can't send any of my people without risking the children of Adam linking them back to Acadia. But you... You're new to the island. What are you planning, Dima? Before I begin, how much do you know? Did you have any questions for me? About Far Harbor, the children of Adam, or my memories? You left your memories behind? How does that work? As a prototype synth, my raw data capacity is limited. I began using computer banks to expand, to give me room to ponder, see new things. I had to leave some of my earliest memories behind when I left the sub-base to the Children of Adam. I thought they were safe. You're keeping Far Harbor safe, is that it? Not exactly. They're fiercely independent. But the fog was starting to choke more and more of the island. So I proposed a trade. We would give them the technology to keep the fog at bay. In return for them being a lifeline to the outside world. A safe dock. And a place to buy supplies. Unfortunately, the children of Adam view the radioactive fog as a holy portent. And their bloodied history with Far Harbor puts us at odds. The children of Adam on this island. You were helping them? Yes. I know their faith in radiation as a type of god is a bit... different. But who am I to judge? I was using a submarine base as a home when Martin and his followers stumbled inside. They had been cast out of Far Harbor for their beliefs. When I left to found Acadia, I knew the base would be in safe hands. They needed a home, a place to belong, just like I did. But now Martin is gone, and his successor, Tectus, wants to finally end the feud with Far Harbor by letting the fog swallow them. I know all I need to. Then my plan is simple. Pose as a recruit and infiltrate the children of Adam. Gain access to their base in the old command center Guarded by some pre-war security measures, you'll find my memory banks. I'll give you the program you need in order to access my memories. Bring me anything you find. It's not going to be like a normal hack. You'll be breaking through a version of my own mental network. 
it'll consider you to be an intruder. I've loaded the program with some instructions I've recorded that will help guide you through it. I'm afraid it's difficult to explain without seeing it for yourself. So how does this program work? There will be a fairly ordinary looking terminal with some attachments. The program will give you access to the terminal. Once you attempt to obtain a memory, your perspective might shift a little. Just relax then. The program will explain things to you as you need them. Actually, I already have the program. I was thorough. Well, I guess that just means I've picked the right person for the job. One more thing before you leave. Whatever you do, don't assault the children of Adam directly. Our ultimate goal must be to bring peace. If you attack them, they'll consider themselves at war with the outside world. If we find anything suspicious in those memories of yours, we'll be back. Count on it. Turns out Dima's earliest memories are in the hands of the children of Adam. He's afraid of what they're gonna find. So, is that what those death projections were about? It wasn't Dima planning to destroy the island. He's worried the children of Adam will. Or is he still hiding something? What could be in those memories that he would leave them behind? Is there really something in them that's... dangerous? Do you have a way in? Into his memories? Assuming you can get past the children of Adam, of course. I got this program that Faraday and Dima wrote. It's supposed to help me access the memory banks. Really? How would that work? When I was taking a peek in the computers he has here, Dima was hooked up to his chair. I was just tapping into it. I wonder if you'll need to, you know, connect to the old banks the way he does? Some kind of connection between your head and the computer. Oh, but that's it. And then Faraday's program would be translating Dima's thoughts and data, helping you through any security guarding it. I'm sorry, I'm making assumptions. It's just, well, it's a little exciting, isn't it? You'll let me know what you find? I'll keep an eye on things here. I'll get Dima's memories, and then we'll figure things out from there. Good luck. What? Oh, sorry. Just got my head full of what Dima was talking about. That's a bit of a shock. What do you think he is, really? Family? Before I answer, are you okay? I'll keep. Don't worry. I just need to figure this all out. Honestly? I don't know what to think, Nick. Yeah. Guess that makes two of us. I spent a long time wondering if the Institute had made any other prototypes. If I was just a failure, or they gave up, or, or just plain got bored. I always thought I was just more of their discarded trash. Never thought of the possibility that someone wanted me out. Helped me escape. There's got to be some kind of proof out there. What really happened between me and Dima? I'd appreciate it if we could keep an eye out. What kind of proof would we be looking for? I don't know. But our best bet is to keep looking into Dima and Acadia. Of course, Nick. We'll find something. Thanks. I know we don't have much to go on. Just keep me in mind if you find something that might give us some answers. Are you that detective I've heard about? I guess you could say that. Oh, wonderful. I wasn't sure how I was ever going to find you. Sounds like we may have another case on our hands. I haven't been able to find any of the local police force. The louts? I don't want to start a panic, but, well, we may have a murder on our hands, and we need an outside set of eyes. Where did the crime take place? At the Cliff's Edge Hotel, just north of the town. Please, you must help us. Every moment we wait, our residents are at risk. Who's the victim? Well, we want to keep this out of the tabloids, but it's Ezra Parker, the financier of the hotel. Will you help us solve this heinous crime? Who are your employers? I shouldn't say out here in the open, but my employers are quite wealthy, as are the other patrons of the hotel. Will you help us? 
There may still be a murderer at large. Okay, I'll help. Oh, thank goodness. Shall I guide you to the Cliff's Edge Hotel now? Yeah, let's go. Let's be off then. I should warn you, some of the other hotel guests are a bit, um, rowdy. I was forced to defend myself when a few became a bit handsy, shall we say. The registered patrons are in a more exclusive area of the hotel, though, and do not associate with this sort of rabble. Shall we be off? What do you mean the other patrons are rowdy? I had not been in this part of the hotel for some time. Perhaps there is some sort of sporting event that has them agitated. Several of them tried to grab me and, well, their clothing was certainly not suitable for polite company. Shall we be off? I'm going to look around here first. Very well. We can commence into the hotel as soon as you are ready. Die Welcome to Vault 118, rattles. your home away from home, underground. Are you the detective we sent for? It's me, Pearl. I've returned with the investigator. Let me just get the door for you. Well, it's about time the police sent someone out to investigate. We have many important residents and they are very worried. What happened? Who died? It's Mr. Parker. The primary owner and financier for the hotel. This is just a disaster. Do you not see it? The glory of the thing? The artistry? What the hell is wrong with you? Excuse me? Ezra, you have outdone yourself. <gasps> this is your finest work. There is more emotion in his death than most have had in their entire lives. Our friend is dead, Mr. Avita. Have you no respect? I'm just saying that at least he had the decency to make a spectacle of it. There is nothing Please, worse if than I may, That's if what this I could is just to you? have your attention... You're sick. I'm sorry for shouting, but the detective has arrived and shall begin the investigation henceforth. Please return to your rooms until the detective has examined the crime scene and had a chance to come speak with you. Was there anything else? Your residents are robots. Not robots, detective. Well, not exactly, anyway. <laughs> I believe the term they use is robo-brain. Back before the war, the residents decided the best way to wait it out was to put their brains inside robotic chassis. Was there anything else? I found the murder weapon. Oh no. That's the bat from Mr. McKinney's movie. You don't think he could be involved, do you? I can't imagine him ever doing such a thing. Was there anything else? Tell me about the victim. Mr. Ezra Parker was the primary owner and financier for the hotel. He had vast experience managing venture projects around the world. It was his idea to have our premier clients become investors in the vault section of the hotel. He worked with Vault Tech to have this built to their every specification. Was there anything else? I'm not sure where I should start. I suppose you should try to figure out how he died, and then who had the means and motive to kill him. Once you have enough evidence, then I suppose you'll need to confront the killer. Well, 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 well. If it isn't the long arm of the law, tell me, are you a devotee of the arts? Does that cruel muse call you to her entrapping bosom? Art is life. <laughs> Without it, we are no different than animals. Perhaps. If all we are is a sentience floating in a suit of flesh, or metal, I suppose, then art is the only true communion with the world. Come with me. Tell me, what does this piece say to you? It's about composition, the balance of colors and emotions, and the struggle to maintain internal order. Indeed. This was the last piece I did in a series of portraits of Gilda. Number 1378. Her emotional landscape is superimposed on the portrait. 
The reality of the subject is distorted as the ego attempts to project itself. This way. Tell me, what does this one say to you? It's the war. Bombs from every direction, no up or down, the world turned on its head. I suppose in a way it must be. Art shapes the world, and the world shapes art in return. All art must therefore be constantly reborn through the lens of contextual and historic interpretation. We must ascend. And what art this one? And please be honest, for art without honesty is just politics. It's a metaphor. A young creature grappling with ideas it doesn't possess the capability to understand. Intriguing. The mind will superimpose meaning where none was intended. I had not considered it. Truth be told, this is my best-selling piece. I did this series under a pseudonym, of course. Did you have any thoughts about the murder? The person you should be looking at is Juliana Riggs. That Philistine would not know art from her own excrement. She and Ezra had a rather dramatic fight recently. You could hear her banshee screeches all the way across the hotel. What were Juliana and Ezra arguing about? I don't know. I was painting at the time and I was trying to block it out. Though I bet Gildo probably heard them. Maybe you should check with her. It sounds like you've done a lot of paintings of Gilda. Why her? Our Gilda is a very singular creature, detective. Do you not see this what feel from within her? I have never met another who clings to life so tenaciously. Who lives so in the moment. I must admit I was quite smitten with her for a time. You're still in love with Gilda, aren't you? So what if I am? What business is it of yours? She deserves someone who truly understands her ephemeral beauty. Not that brute actor. Tell me about yourself. What is there to tell? I am one of the premier artists in the world. My work is primarily in oil paint, but I have been known to do sculpture or performance art as well. Maybe later. Good. I hope my paintings are able to open your mind to new possibilities. Hello, Mr. Whiskers. Who's a pretty kitty? Uh, Juliana, uh, Mr. Whiskers died last month. This is Scruffy, remember? Oh, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Just let me have a look at the neural interface matrix, and I'm sure I can clear that. Uh... No. No, it's not that. Uh, I've just caught another cold. Probably something that got in when they sent Pearl out. Oh, God. Not this again. Last month you were convinced you had the measles. You're not a doctor. What would you even know about it? Besides, I think it may be malaria. First of all, I am a doctor. Yes, but not a real doctor. Robotics isn't an actual medical degree. Secondly, I've told you time and again, you can't get sick inside the suit. It's not physically possible. I know when I'm getting sick, Bert. Now why don't you just wander off and play in your lab? Mr. Scruffy and I are going to rewrite the will, so he will get everything when I die because horrible Bert didn't believe me. Oh, God, Juliana. Have fun, Whatever. dear. I'm going to the lab. Hello again. Did you need something? Tell me about yourself. Oh, uh, well, I'm a scientist. Uh, you've probably met my wife, Juliana, already. Uh, not sure what else to say, really. Oh, was there something else, Detective? Tell me about your research. Well, I was one of the leads on the team that created the first Robo-Brains, the precursors uh, to our model. Uh, most people don't find it all that interesting, and I, I'd rather not bore you. Oh, was there something else, Detective? I'd like to hear more about your research. Oh, wonderful. Uh, no one else here really wants to talk about it. Functionally, this model is more or less the same as the previous versions I worked on, I've, but without the neural inhibitor and the reconditioning. The voice modulator uh, seems to have some minor issues interfacing with the neural matrix, uh, which can add some moodiness. Uh, but that's easily solved with regular tune-ups. 
was there something else a detective did you have any thoughts about the murder oh well that's not really my field of expertise but i'm sure there are probably some clues at the crime scene oh was there something else a detective i heard that juliana and ezra had an argument a few days before he was found dead tell me about that well i was in my lab at the time so i didn't think didn't hear it but juliana has always been rather critical of mr parker i think she found something in the overseer's office uh, i wasn't listening when she told me about it I, i kind of had my head in my research i don't know really i tried to let her handle all the money stuff oh, was there something else a detective robo brains have a voice modulator tell me about that uh, that's what allows us to recreate our original voices uh, they can mimic any normal human voice actually I've speculated for some time that the issues we had with our uh, uh, recruited subjects uh, is due to the brain attempting to preserve a sense of self. Uh, maintaining our original voices helps reinforce the neural network, uh, sort of like uh, playing music for an Alzheimer patient. Oh, was there something else, detective? I'd like to hear more about your research. I'm afraid that's really all I should say about it. I mean, it is still classified, but I wanted to help with the investigation. Oh, was there something else, a detective? Maybe later. Very well. I'll just get back to my work then. Did you have any thoughts about the murder? If you ask me, it's one of those actors or that horrible painter. Their type is always the cause of violence. I heard you had a big fight with Ezra a few days ago. Care to explain? Oh, well, it wasn't that big a deal, really. He wanted more money to pay for repairs on the hotel. I wasn't feeling well that day and lashed out a bit at the poor man. I really should have listened to him more. What's with all the junk in here? These are our things. We're just waiting till the war blows over so we can bring them back to the mansion. Tell me about yourself. I'm Juliana Riggs, heiress to the Riggs fortune and wife of Bert Riggs. I'm not sure what else you expected, detective. Maybe later. Good luck catching the murderer, detective. Uh, hello, detective. Did you need something? Have you noticed Juliana acting strangely lately? Oh, well, uh, I'm probably just being paranoid, but uh, She's been so much more pleasant lately. I mean, it's been nice, but also a bit unnerving. Most people don't really understand us, but I always appreciated how she can just take charge of a situation. It's what allowed me to focus on my research. I, I'm worried something has happened to her. She doesn't seem like the same person. Oh, was there something else, a detective? What do you mean Juliana's not the same person? My wife has always been a very harsh woman, detective. I don't know who it is in our rooms, but that is not my wife, detective. Why'd you do it, huh? He deserved better than that. You think I'm stupid? I saw the way he looked at you. You gonna tell me that's nothing? It wasn't like that. We were friends. He helped me out of a tight spot or two is all. I couldn't stand by like some pasty-faced Percy while he put the moves on my best girl. But now the law is on our tail. What are we going to do? Come away with me. Let's leave this dark hole of a city behind. We can be in Buenos Aires by tomorrow. Oh, I want to believe you, I do, but they'll never let us go. Then we'll make our stand here. I... I've got a gun for each of us. No, 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 no. The line is... Then we'll make our stand here. Two lovers together with a bullet for each of them. Oh, God. Why can't I ever get that line? Forget it. I can't do this right now. Ugh, fine. I'm going to the beach. If it isn't the brave detective. I haven't seen someone with a body like that in far, far too long. Can we talk about the murder? Oh, boo. You're no fun. I suppose we can talk about the case, unless you'd rather hear some stories from my acting career. Tell me something. Perhaps if we were better... acquainted, I'd be willing to share what I know. 
Care to hear some of my stories, detective? All right. Did you know that I was supposed to star in Love Set Sail? The only reason that bitch Vera got the part is because her uncle was the producer. Did you need something else? Apparently, Juliana had a big argument with Ezra a few days before he died. Did you happen to overhear any of the conversation? Oh, yes. I haven't seen a woman go off like that since Teresa Dubois fired her costume designer. But to get back to your question, it was fever pitch, detective. She had apparently gone to the overseer's office to check on the state of things and found it in horrible disrepair. But, and this is where it gets interesting, it sounded like she found something that really set her off. Couldn't hear what, though. Did you need something else? I found Keith's baseball bat at the scene of the murder. Any thoughts on how it got there? I don't know, detective. I can't really imagine Keith killing Ezra. Did you need something else? I've gotten the impression you've had an affair with Santiago. Look, I love Keith, I do. But sometimes he just can't give me the attention I need. A girl gets lonely, detective. It only lasted a few dozen years. The man's a bit much, even for me. Did you need something else? What were you and Keith talking about when I came in? Oh, that? We were rehearsing! Gotta stay sharp before going to rebuild Hollywood. But Keith always gets flustered when he's upset. Did you need something else? Did you have any thoughts about the murder? Well, it is a bit strange how obsessed Santiago has been with the murder. I mean, he's always been a bit obsessive, though. He did a whole series of paintings of me, hundreds, said I was his muse. It was flattering for a while, but the man is a bit much, even for me. Did you need something else? Tell me about yourself. My favorite subject. Simply put, darling, I'm the greatest actress in the world. When this international scuffle blows over, I shall return to the silver screen and lead the world to a new golden age of cinema. Did you need something else? Maybe later. I'll be around, languishing from your inattention. Hello, detective. How can I help? Did you have questions about the case? Did you have any thoughts about the murder? It's obviously Santiago. He keeps going back to look at the crime scene. I found your baseball bat at the crime scene. Care to explain how it got there? Someone is clearly trying to frame me for the murder. It's probably Santiago. You saw him skulking around the crime scene. What were you and Gilda talking about when I walked in? Hmm? Oh, we were just rehearsing a scene. Nothing to worry about. I think you're the murderer. The brain enclosure was smashed in, and your bat was at the scene of the crime. What? That makes no sense at all. What motive would I possibly have to kill Ezra? Maybe you could give me a reason it couldn't be you. I... I... I would never harm Ezra, detective. I was... in love with him. Tell me about you and Ezra. Oh, God, I don't know. When we first met him, he was just so mysterious and exciting. It seemed like he had been everywhere and done everything. I convinced Gilda that we should invest in the hotel so I could stay close to him. But he never seemed to realize how I felt. I mean, we spent time together. Going hunting, having drinks, talking about his plans for the hotel. He must have known, but he never said anything. Do you have any idea what it's like to pine for someone for 200 years, Detective? Ah, my fellow connoisseur of the art. Here to see my latest war. I think you should explain why you keep returning to the crime scene. It's for inspiration, Detective. The others do not like to think about it, but even we shall die someday. Like Prometheus's torch, it kindles within me the fire to create as much art as I can with the time that I have. Hello, detective. Did you have a question about the heinous murder? I found some evidence that Ezra was embezzling from you and the other investors. Oh, well, I really don't believe that. Mr. Parker wouldn't do such a thing, I'm sure. I think you're the real murderer. <laughs> That's just silly, detective. Why would I want to kill Mr. Parker? 
Maybe you could give me a reason it couldn't be you. I'm sick all the time, Detective. I don't have the strength to do such a thing. Give it up. I know your secret, Juliana. Or should I say, Ezra? Well, Detective, that's quite the claim. It's a shame. I thought I could keep You're the ruse nice going a little longer. Oh, well. Had to end eventually, I suppose. This doesn't have to end in more violence, Detective. Just walk away. I'll leave, and you can tell them I escaped. Why did you kill Juliana? I hadn't planned on it, but Juliana figured out what I was doing and had to be dealt with swiftly. I thought I could get a bit more money out of this place before making my escape. What's it going to be, detective? Join me in getting rich or die defending some outdated ideals? Not a chance. Your murder spree stops here. Then let us end this. I found the killer. It was Ezra. He killed Juliana and took her place to hide his tracks. My word! I never thought Mr. Parker was capable of something like this. What happened when you confronted him? He attacked me, but it's over now. Your residents are safe. There you are, detective. Payment for your services and a bonus for uncovering such a heinous plot. I don't think we could have done it without you.